morning to you. How embarrassing is this? Good morning, Kay. Well, I think as the Chancellor said this morning, uh, this is a government that listens. Quite clearly, the proposal to remove that additional rate, the 45p band, was proving uh, to be a distraction from the wider package of growth measures which help everybody. They were very broadly based tax cuts. And so listening to what uh, the public have said and also what members of parliament, conservative members of parliament have said, um, the Chancellor and Prime Minister have decided not to proceed with that measure. Uh, but they are, of course, proceeding with all the rest of the growth plan, the other 95% of it, which includes very broadly based tax cuts that will benefit everybody. The average family will be about £430 a year better off. And we're going to get Britain's economy growing, which ultimately will generate more tax revenues to pay for public services, see wages rising and see the jobs of the future getting cre uh, created. So we're going to focus on that 95% of the package, uh, which I think commands widespread support uh, and not proceed with this relatively small measure, uh, which clearly did not command support. Mm. You're his right hand man. How involved were you in the decision to cut that top rate of tax? Well, these decisions are made ultimately by the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. They obviously talk to a lot of colleagues, um, you know, across the Cabinet and indeed beyond. I mean, the Prime Minister and Chancellor have been talking uh, to members of Parliament uh, in the last few days on, on this question and on others. So they draw their... Um, they talk to a lot of different people, um, but ultimately they obviously make the decisions. Uh, your is right-hand man. How involved were you, were you in the process? Uh, well, obviously, they talk to me um, about these things, um, but as I say, they talk to a lot of people uh, no, about this because... that's not my question, because, Mr Fulk. Uh, How know... involved were you in the process? Well, you know, the Prime Minister and Chancellor talk to me about this as they talk to other people, um, but it's not a... You know, it's a government which is broadly based. They were talking to a lot of MPs across the Parliamentary Party in the last few days who were obviously speaking for their constituents, um, and ultimately the Prime Minister and Chancellor decided to... Uh, change tack uh, because they obviously okay. are listening. Uh, this is a government that listens and that's what they've done. But uh, the key point is that 95% of this growth plan okay. by value you said that. Uh, is yep. going ahead Absolutely. as planned and it, will help, and it will help with. get our economy growing, Kate. Sure. Mr Phil, okay. um, did you present the Chancellor and the would-be Prime Minister with a paper outlining that this would be a good idea during the uh, election campaign for the new Prime Minister? Um, I was asked to look at whole like dozens and dozens did of different ideas. Did you or did you not present uh, I'm not them gonna, with a I'm paper not gonna, I'm not suggesting go, this was a good idea? I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into the details of what ideas were or were not discussed by cabinet Why not? because it, those are those are because those are private conversations, Kay. And what I'm interested in talking it about is the growth the country, plan that's going to see wages servant. rising. Was it your idea? I would not describe it as my idea, no. Um, but we discussed lots of ideas. I discussed those ideas. I was asked to analyse different ideas. Um, we discussed dozens of dozens, dozens of different things. They were discussed with me, with lots and lots of other people, uh, members of parliament and other people as well. Uh, we put together the growth plan, uh, which will get our economy growing. It will see wages rising and it will okay, see a sustainable tax base developed. I've allowed you to developed. say that, Mr Philp. Did you Fun present... public services. Well, it's an important did you point. Present, did you present, Ms Truss and uh, Mr uh, Kwarteng with a paper suggesting that this is what would happen if there was a cut from 45p I did not, I did not to 40p. OK, Kay, I did not produce a paper specifically on this measure. We discussed lots and lots of paper? different ideas. OK, I think I've, I've said as much as I want to say about this. Lots and lots of different ideas were discussed I'm sure that's by lots the case, and lots of different people. But nevertheless, it's my job to press people. you on it. And my question is... As part of a that. paper, as part of a work, as part of a body of work that was given to them during the election campaign, did you suggest in writing that this could be a good idea? I'm not going to go any further into discussion, so private discussions that were held over the summer. I'm not, I've said as much as I want to say about this. You know, there were widespread discussions involving me, involving other people, involving dozens of different ideas uh, and, you know, decisions ultimately... Um, get made by the Chancellor and by the Prime Minister, listening to a lot of different people. It was your idea, wasn't it? I wouldn't describe it as my idea, no. Whose idea was it? I've already said that a lot of different ideas got discussed by a lot of different people uh, during the course of the campaign and subsequently. Um, but the growth plan, the whole growth plan, was a team effort which was debated 
and um, ultimately decided on by the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. And the growth plan is an extremely positive plan. It will see taxes falling for every single working family by an average of £430 each. It'll see infrastructure projects getting expedited. It will see... Uh, they saw the energy intervention, which is stopping families who would otherwise have faced bills of six, seven thousand pounds a year, getting those bills capped at two and a half thousand pounds a year on average. Instead, it'll see uh, domestic energy supplies getting stimulated, so we're no longer reliant on importing electricity from overseas. So this is a really positive plan and talking to members of parliament or listening to what they've been saying and I think uh, almost all of this plan is being widely welcomed. There was this one element that's now being uh, removed to avoid it being a distraction. Do you think that people should own their mistakes? Look, I think this government is one that, like any government, is one that should listen. Uh, listen to our democracy, um, we should listen to the public. We're a parliamentary democracy so we should listen to MPs and I think when a measure is found which uh, doesn't which is proving to be a distraction which doesn't command um, the support that we would like to see then it's a sensible and responsive thing to rather than being very sort of inflexible and saying well, we're not going to listen we're just going to plow on anyway to be responsive and to change course is the right thing to do um, that is you know I think you'd like to see your viewers would like to see a government which listens and which responds um, to parliamentary opinion because obviously MPs speak for their constituents and for constituents directly as well. And I see that as a, a point of sort of maturity uh, and strength, frankly. And I think what the Chancellor is going to be talking about today in his speech just after four o'clock are the positive <laughs> elements in the growth plan that will get our country growing, which I know I have let's said once or twice before. Point. OK, fantastic. We know what time the speech is. Uh, let's come back to the point. Do you think, I'm sure my viewers will want to know, do you think that politicians should own their mistakes? Well, I, mean, I think, you know, um, the yes chance has been no. going on TV, on other TV programmes this morning. Um, well, yes, of course politicians should be responsible. And but you're not I think that's what you're seeing today. You're, you? seeing... you're not owning your mistake, are you? Well, no, I mean, that's, I don't think that's um, accurate or fair, to be quite honest. Why? Well, because, you know, these are broadly based discussions. Lots of people are involved. The decisions are taken by the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. Um, I was one of many people involved in those discussions. And I don't accept your characterisation. OK, so you didn't put anything in writing at all that said that this was a good idea? Because obviously, Analyzed if there's a bit of paper saying of that, ideas. that's going to come to light at some stage. Now's your opportunity to well, say whether you did or not. I just told you, I just told you I analysed a whole different idea, a number of ideas. Um, and I was, was one of them cutting the top rate ideas. of tax? Was one I'm of them gonna, cutting I'm not going to get into what all of those... Question, I'm not going to get into I'm what I'm giving you the opportunity were. to own your mistake. And, I, and I'm saying I'm not going to get into the details of who said what when. When policies get discussed and made internally, people don't give a running commentary on exactly who was involved in which discussion. A lot of different people were involved. A lot of different ideas got discussed by different people. Um, and I think that people will understand that. What matters now is that we've listened uh, to public opinion. We've listened to parliamentary opinion. This idea clearly wasn't popular um, and therefore we've removed it. So it's not a distraction from the very positive wider growth plan. When did you realise it was a bad idea? Well, I think the economics of it, there's a very strong case for doing it. As I've been saying uh, probably on your programme, I don't think you were um, presenting that day, but, um, you know, there's, for reasons of international competitiveness, there is a strong economic case, but it's become very clear over the last few days um, that the public uh, and parliamentary opinion uh, don't, don't like the idea um, for a variety of reasons, and so we've responded to that because we are a government that listens, and that's, I think, a good thing. Yeah, but, I mean, you were cutting... 50, so uh, a millionaire would get an extra £55,000 a year, but you weren't restoring the uh, universal credit uplift. That would mean that £55,000 a year, that universal credit would, would pay for 57 years for a family of four. We're in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis. People cannot heat their homes, and you and others thought it was a good idea to cut the tax that millionaires were paying. At what stage were you listening, reading the runes, listening to what the public was saying? Well, first of all, no decisions have been made on universal credit. The DWP secretary will go through uh, the normal process in the course of the autumn. Uh, secondly, so it's possible pack, that that could measure, come back? Is that measure... Sorry, just to pick you up on that, is that going to come back? What is what going to come back? 
universal credit uplift. That, that's not been completely off the table because I've been speaking to your colleagues last week and they said well, it, it hasn't was, been but, decided. I mean, no, it hasn't been, you're the, you're the Chancellor's been... right-hand man. You Look, would know. The, the, so the, the DWP secretary makes decisions under statute about things like universal credit. There's a process that the DWP secretary goes through every autumn. That is happening, or that will be happening shortly, in the normal way. So I don't, I, there's nothing I can say one way or the other about universal credit. That's going through its normal uh, process. But to answer your point about the top rate, that was about one twentieth, about le less than 5% of the fiscal measures in the growth plan. The growth plan contains broadly based tax cuts that benefit all working families, around about 30 million people, which will see them £450 a year uh, better off on average. The, the additional rate uh, measure, if you look at the table, it was a relatively small, very small part, in fact, of the total measures. It was less than one twentieth of all of the measures in the plan taken as a whole. Yeah, but you're missing the optics here, are you not, Mr Philp? The fact is, fat cats getting shed, lo shed loads more money is how my viewers will be seeing it this morning, as opposed to people who are deciding whether or not they can put food in their kids' bellies. Do, do you... It's not about yeah, the money. And, and that's why... It's about the optics. Yes, that's right. And you we thought it was a good yes, idea. You thought it was well, a good on. idea. We, so we do accept... No, you well, personally we do accept thought it optics. was a good idea. Well, a, a number of people thought it was a good idea. No, and I've, but I've you just did, briefly, and I'm talking explaining... to you this morning, and you thought it was a good idea. Yes. So the economics, the economics of this... Um, there's a very strong economic case, which I've, I've been setting out on your programme and others in the last week or so, which is to do with economic competitiveness. It's about, uh, as you played the clip from the Chancellor in the House of Commons um, from a couple of weeks ago, saying that we need to be uh, economically competitive compared to other countries to make sure people locate here. So that was the economic argument. It's quite a good one. However, there is another argument, which is the one you've just made, about the optics and the juxtaposition of the tax cut for people on higher incomes at a difficult time. And we... The government has accepted, the Chancellor and Prime Minister have accepted that that argument, the case that you just put, um, is the more important one and that's why they've uh, changed their mind, uh, which is, I think, the right thing to do in response to people's very strong feelings. There is an economic argument on the other side, but they've weighed them up, uh, which is the one I just mentioned briefly a second ago. They've weighed the two up and come to their decision. Um, the Prime Minister said yesterday that it was the Chancellor's um, decision, uh, not hers. Well, I mean, they, you know, the Chancellor is the minister who is primarily responsible, obviously, for um, budget decisions. That's just a statement of, of regular fact. But, of course, you know, they talk to each other a great deal and to other ministers as well. And it's ultimately um, collectively uh, decided and supported. OK, so she was wrong to say that it was uh, the Chancellor's decision. Well, I mean, she was right to say the Chancellor is the minister primarily responsible for this policy area, but obviously it gets discussed more widely as well. OK, it's great to talk to you. I know that you're going to have a rough round this morning of talking to other media, but we appreciate you coming to talk to us, as always. Thank you.